brothers and sisters, this is the Remnant Warrior from Kingdom Productions Network. I wanted to thank you all for watching this video and all Kingdom Productions Network content and ask that you please hit the like button because it truly helps the channel grow and new people see the content. And if you aren't already subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll know each time we upload new content. Grace and peace. And sisters, and welcome to the first live streamed episode of the Remnant Report Season 5 for 2024. I am your host, the Remnant Warrior, along with my co-host, the Remnant Watchman, and we are so glad to be with you guys in a brand new year. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well, thanks, uh, Jeremy. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, we've had some trouble getting the, the stream going, and... Uh, it, I hope it's not <laughs> an indication of how it's going to be throughout the year, but, you know, normally we haven't done many live streams in the past, but, or at least the past year, I did plenty of live streams in the years prior, but last year we didn't live stream but once, so... Or maybe, I think, three times. But, uh, I think we're going to start this year, depending on how this goes. But uh, I think I'm definitely going to get some different software. But today, we are going to be talking about 2024. Bible prophecy. Uh, things that the body of Christ need to look for, work on. Uh, not just prophetically, but work on together with each other and on their own. I'm going to be talking about things that I've researched that I see coming both in the United States and on the world scene for the year. And Brother Tertius, uh, he's going to be doing the same thing for South Africa and things he's seen uh, in research for there and for the uh, world scene for the year and we're just going to have a good dialogue and hopefully some of you guys will be in the live chat and if not then it will definitely be here for you to watch afterwards. But brother, uh, I'm gonna turn things over to you today to begin with and let you just explain what you see research that is on the horizon for South Africa and for the world in the coming year, whether it's prophetically or just things that you think could happen for whatever reason. Okay. Yes, um, well, in South Africa, the problem is that um, the government we have is basically, uh, we are not officially a communist country, but the government we have, have a lot of, um, they have a lot of love for the communist ideology and we have an election in 2024, a national election, I think it's somewhere in April or May. And um, a lot of people suspect that the governing party is going to fall. But um, if that happens, um, you know, the thing is that um, they won't let go easily. I think it's going to be, it's going to cause a lot of chaos and there's going to be maybe the armed uprisings and so on um, that's that's what I suspect because um, that's their style and 
you know the other thing is a lot of people will ask you in south africa they will ask you who are you going to vote for and this and that um the thing is what i always say is it doesn't matter what happens which party is in control uh, jesus christ is still the king of kings and um, nothing happens that's outside of god's um, plan so that's the wonderful uh, that's the wonderful um, hope that we have uh, jesus christ is our blessed hope amen but um one of the problems we have obviously um i i think everyone has noticed that the past few months uh, south africa in the war between uh, israel and Hamas, uh, south africa has come out the south african government has said that um, they want to take israel to court and this and that now the irony of that is that um, the South African government wants to take Israel to court um, over their war with Hamas, but in South Africa we basically have a struggle each day with crime. I mean, we have um, we are basically one of the most dangerous countries in on the continent of Africa, and um, our we have something like 60 to 65 murders per day. Um, the rape statistics is even higher than that. So the government don't r seem to have a problem with crime. Um, so they basically are dumping the country in chaos. Now, you know, it's ironic that they want to um, dictate to other countries what they can and cannot do and what they should and shouldn't do. But um, their own house is not in order. I mean, that's that's the irony of ironies. So um, the problem is that in um, the Western Cape province also, we have uh, a lot of uh, Islam people. Now, there is an organization there who calls themselves, uh, they call themselves Pagat. That is P-A-G-A-D. Now, the official story is, which is a smokescreen, the official story is that Pagat stands for People Against Gangsterism and Drugs. And they supposedly, they're fighting gangsterism and drugs in the Western Cape province. But uh, I've spoken to a lot of former policemen and people who were in crime intelligence and so on, and they all tell me the same. They say Pagat is a front organization for militant Islam to, to basically operate in South Africa. So what I suspect is going to happen is um, I suspect that we are going to move more and more in the direction of our government being friends with militant Islam, um, militant Islam itself having a, a foothold in South Africa through an organization like Pagat. And um, I think that Pretty soon, persecution, the persecution of Christians in South Africa is going to become a major thing. Um, I think it's going to be one of those things that it's just going to start to come overnight, you know. Already, um, as far as persecution of Christians in South Africa goes, um, we have a lot to be thankful for. Um, people can still go to a church. Uh, I myself go to a house church. Um, that we have, my wife and I have, with a group of um, fellow believers. Um, you can still uh, read the Bible, you can still buy the Bible and so on, at old gatherings and meetings. But um, on our side, the, the uh, persecution that we see is more on a psychological level. You know, um, people will attack you on social media. And interestingly, those who attack you are usually people, indigenous people, who say Christianity is a white man's religion. I don't want your white man's religion. Um, other people who attack you are some of my um, my own nationality, uh, not my nationality, like my cultures, people, um, those of us who come from the European culture originally. Um, a lot of them fall for the sacred name movement and they also have a movement here in South Africa that they call the Israel Truth Movement. Now, the Israel Truth Movement is so ridiculous, they claim 
that you can only read the Old Testament and they claim that South Africa is actually Israel and that, South, that, that the Afrikaner people are the chosen people of God. So it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, you know, and they love to attack Christians and tell you that, oh, Jesus Christ was, he, he was, he's a made up character and you shouldn't read the New Testament and so on. So the persecution at this moment is a lot on a psychological level, but I think it will, um, overnight, it will become something uh, more official um, as far as the government goes. Even if we get another government uh, somewhere in 2024, it's probably going to be uh, another liberal kind of government, not not as communist as the one we currently have, but it's going to be still going to be quite far left, um, and they will probably also. I mean, the far left parties in South Africa, they they love abortion, they glorify abortion. Um, and I mean, we all know the spiritual uh, meaning behind abortion. It's basically a sacrifice to the fallen angel Molech, and um, it's it's a way for the elite people to to glorify the the fallen ones. Um, so that and also um, they will have a massive problem with uh, Christian beliefs being um, uh, told being taught to children in schools, you know, they, they will definitely have a great problem with that. So, um, yeah, that's that's it from my side for, for, for this moment, brother. I don't know if you want to respond or want to add something. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, I, I would like to just apologize to the audience. I was, I was listening to you, brother, but I was on my phone looking on YouTube at the stream and if any sound came up that's why I tried to mute it as quick as I could but um, I saw on the stream that the video is lagging to where uh, what the things that we're saying aren't lining up with our mouths so um, you know like we'll say something and then it, it, it won't be until we're saying something else before you know the video catches up with the sound so i apologize yeah. for that like i said i'm i'm going to definitely change streaming softwares and you know uh, depending on how you guys react and and like the live videos will depend on how many live videos we do um I would like to say, you guys, please subscribe if you aren't already. Um, like 70% of our audiences that watches the videos are returning viewers, but they aren't subscribed. So if you enjoy the content, please subscribe it and like the video because it helps get the, the gospel message out to more and more people. It, it helps. The YouTube algorithms put the video out and suggest it to people. And uh, if you want to help this ministry grow, you can uh, become a member of the channel. You can join the channel as well as subscribe, or you can go to our store and buy some of uh, our custom merchandise. You know, Remnant Report, Remnant Warrior, Remnant Watchmen, and Kingdom Productions. Or, we have this awesome design feature in the store where you can create your own custom merchandise. You can put whatever you want on it. And I think that's probably the coolest feature in the entire store. Um, you know, if you go to Amazon and buy something, you can't design it yourself. So... That's why I, I really like that part. But as far as back to the important stuff, I agree with you completely. And it's, it's, it's not at all a coincidence, and I don't believe in coincidence, that America is also getting more and more socialist, 
and communist. Um, you know, I, I it, it's not a secret. I, I don't make it a secret that I do not. I mean, because I live here and because I was born here, I am an American citizen. But I have no loyalty to any nation except for the kingdom of heaven. Just as our king said that his kingdom was not of this world and the scriptures teach that it is the heavenly Jerusalem that we are citizens of I also follow as an ambassador and say that you know my kingdom is not of this world. So I, I, I keep up with the things that are going on in the politics of the country I live and uh, the political shenanigans of the world, but only to be informed and keep up with Bible prophecy. Because, yeah. you know, as you said, and it, trust me, it's getting worse here. And I think 2024 is going to be a record breaking year for Christians being persecuted all over the world. But in your country, it's a Muslim persecution. And if you go in the video archives just a few days ago we played a, a video it's a documentary that debunks and destroys Islam and its prophet from beginning to end it completely dismantles it and the best thing about it is it does it using the words of Muslim scholars and Muslim historians and the things that they have said about Muhammad and the Quran. So it's not like you have a bunch of Christians or Jews who are saying these things about the, is the religion of Islam. These are, you know, Muslim who have said these things over the past 1500 years or so, uh, maybe not quite that, big, but close, uh, since, you know, since the religion was born. But in South Africa, the persecution you said is, is coming from Islam. Well, I think that although right now we see you know over in israel you know the world fixated upon the conflict in between in israel between israel and uh, the palestinian palestinian militants of um hamas and you know their iranian backers and Hezbollah and whoever else may be involved but while the world is focused on that it, it's Satan doing the same thing that a magician does with sleight of hand it's hey look over here and pay no attention to the man behind the curtain you know so to speak you know watch my right hand so you don't see what my left hand is doing um yeah. And here in America, and I think in many other parts of the world, especially in Israel, the persecution of Christians is going to come not from Muslims, because it's never come from Muslims in the United States, regardless to what the propaganda from the mainstream media says. Persecution of Christians in America has never come from Muslims. The other way around, maybe, but not real Christian. But the persecution that's coming on 
uh, worldwide will eventually be from you know the the new world religion the one world religion of the beast and it'll the persecution will be coming from the beast but who is the beast going to? well i think there is an extremely good argument from scripture you know revelation 13 Revelation 9, Revelation 13, Revelation 11, Revelation 17 or 18. Uh, there are many places in the book of Revelation that talk about the beast that rises up out of the sea, out of the earth, out of the abyss. The beast that was, is not, and ascends from the bottomless pit. You know, there are many, many scriptures about the beast who uh, we call and John called Antichrist. You know, even though he yeah. said, you know, many Antichrists were already around in the day that he wrote First John, he said that Antichrist singular was coming. And of course, Paul said that uh, Jesus Christ and the resurrection, Jesus wouldn't return, the resurrection wouldn't happen until what? First, the falling away, and then the man of lawlessness come. And Revelation 13 tells us that, and Revelation 11 tells us that the man of lawlessness will be a, finally able to not only make war with the saints but overcome them. and I believe wholeheartedly unlike a lot of other Christians and Christian scholars um, and ministers you know men like uh, Joel Richardson you know good brothers strong Christians but at the same time, I think wrong on the fact that the Antichrist, the final Antichrist, there's no denying that every Mus Muslim, you know, human being is Antichrist in their beliefs. Because if you deny that Jesus has come in the flesh, or if you deny the Father and the Son that Jesus is the Son of God, then you are an Antichrist. But the final Antichrist, there's just no evident, exegetical evidence in Scripture for the Antichrist coming from Islam, the Mahdi. I think that the Mahdi, the is the Jewish Messiah, are one and the same. You know, so mm -hmm. it may be a, a person, this final world leader, who will be persecuting Christians in the Great Tribulation, may be called. Mahdi by some people and Messiah by others but I think that there's no way to get around the fact that he will have to be accepted by the Jews as their Messiah the religion of rabbinic Judaism is not going to accept a Muslim as their messiah and the messiah is at least their messiah the false messiah the man of lawlessness is at least going to have to appear to fulfill the prophecies in the old testament regarding the lineage there's no way that he'll truly fulfill them you know he's he's not truly going to be the son of david um you know, he's not truly going to be 
from the line of step all the way down. But for them to accept him, I believe that he'll probably have to, you know, uh, seem to be or act as if he is and in the day and age that we live in if you have enough money and power especially if you are someone who has taken a world and i'm getting a little ahead of myself here but taken a world that is on the brink of destruction and you have brought peace to it then people are and you're, you know, doing miracles, signs and wonders, people are going to be a whole lot easier when it comes to believing, you know, whatever you're presenting, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. DNA evidence or documents or whatever. Um, You know, honestly, there's no way to prove lineage as far as Jewish heritage goes, um, you know, I'm sure there's probably a way to look at some things with technology, like the, the, the DNA technology. But as far as the, the historical lineage records that were in the temple in Jesus' day, the records that were there that proved his lineage. You know, we, we see his lineage. I want to say it's in both Mark and Luke. Um, I, it could be Matthew and Luke. It's two Gospels that shows the lineage of Christ. One is from Joseph, one's from Mary. Um, both of them show him to be the son of David. So, you know, he he came from David from both lines, and that was just his human side. You know, um, he was not Joseph's son in any way, shape, or form. You know, his father was God's father. But, and I don't mean that in some ludicrous way of... um, like a Genesis 6 scenario with the Father and Mary, you know, we know that God the Father is spirit. You know, uh, Jesus is the physical representation of of the visible God. Mm -hmm. There would would have been no way for, oh, I guess nothing would be impossible for God, but it didn't happen. So I don't want anybody to think that's what I'm saying. I'm talking about the immaculate conception from the Virgin Mary. You know, Jesus is God, but God is also God the Father, his Father. I don't want to get caught up on things that confuse people, but as far as the persecution of Christians, I see it coming from the opposite side. We see the war that's going on now of course there's two wars technically there's more than two but technically there's um, the two in Europe one country starts with an R the other one starts with the U I'm not going to say their names because I don't want to get us flagged shadow banned or the stream stopped or the video taken down and then the other war, of course, is the one in the Middle East between Israel and uh, Hamas. Mm. But regardless, and I think it's, I don't believe in coincidence again, but I think it's ironic that the main places that are at war right now are the area of the world that many people wrongly call God and Magog, even though God is a individual and Magog is where he's from. <laughs> um, and then the other part of the world is the 
part the the two re- other religions where people from Christianity mostly believe that the Antichrist will arise out. You know, I, I just think it's ironic that these are the two areas that are at war. But I think that the Christian persecution is going to come not from Islam, but from rabbinic Judaism. And I know I'm going to ruffle a lot of feathers saying that. But I've done a lot of research into this. And there are a lot of things lined up before that I'm going to be making a video about. It's not going to be a remnant report episode, but we're going to do an episode about this video. But I'm not even going to be talking in this video except for some, a little bit of, you know, uh, voiceover. I'm going to be showing you guys the things that I can prove for 2024. If I could put them up on the screen now, I would. That's why I've got to get some better streaming software. Like I said, you know, uh, we haven't done any live stream episodes since. 2022 but um one thing that I will point out and this is just a minor thing is that this war that's going on in the Middle East mark my words I'm not prophesying but listen to me anyway so When it happened, you'll remember, hey, the Remnant Warrior said this. This war will not remain a conflict in just that territory. It is going to spread and possibly even merge with the war between the other two countries. And I guarantee you, guarantee you that the country that I reside in will get involved in that confrontation if and only if we are not at war with ourselves first because the powers that shouldn't be have set things up for the United States to go into civil war depending on the outcome of the 2024 presidential election. Mm -hmm. So depending on the election and whether we enter these conflicts before the election, we will definitely enter the one in the Middle East. Depending on whether our current president gets uh, another term, we may end up in both conflicts. If that happens, then there are no longer two conflicts, but rather they are one big third world war. And the front runner for the right in the United States has promised to bring peace. If he is elected, not only is he going to make America great again, like it was ever great to begin with, but he's also going to stop the war in Europe the first day he's president, he says. And he will, I can't remember his word for word on the Middle East, but it wasn't about stopping it. It was uh, more about the, the defense of his legacy 
which are the Abraham Accords. You know, in order for the Abraham Accords to be successful, then that war in the Middle East has to stop. And I believe it will stop, but I believe before it stops, it will become World War III. I truly believe yeah. before either one of these conflicts end, they will merge into World War III. I believe that China and North Korea, just like you said, um, will very probably join one side or the other, and I think the side they join will depend on the one that against the United States and I believe wholeheartedly that when the United States enters in this war it will almost immediately become a nuclear conflict and it won't be the United States that's dropping nukes first mm. you, you know that there are several key places that are target that every country that has a reason to go to war with the US would strike immediately if they chose to go nuclear with any conflict with the US you know there are certain places on the eastern seaboard a uh, couple and the Midwest and then on the West Coast but I believe they would strike every one of them you know simultaneously at the same time the United States only has that is public anyway two facilities for uh, missile defense you know, we've got two strategic, strategic um, missile defense facilities. Now, they are top of the line, but I saw a movie the other day um, that, and you know it, it was about, about those facilities, people attacking those facilities. One was and I don't know if this is where they're really at but in the movie it was one was in Alaska the other one was in a, a secret unknown location in the middle it was like a base in the middle of the city and they attacked both of the systems the, you know the defense facilities they were to destroy the one in um, Alaska, but, and you know it was all about the fight for the one. Movie. But I'm sure you know which movie. Yeah, I'm talking about because it's you know it's a new movie. I that. And I want to quickly apologize for any interference. I've got a couple of messages saying that uh, we've had some connection problems. So if for any reason, you know, lost connection, I apologize. But that is 2024. Um, the last thing I'll say is the the um, hide laws are um, there on the book and if a world government was ever a staff they would be law you know, they are a part of the United Nations um, they're even for U.S. law. Now, I'm not sure if it's 
been passed or not, but I know there's a bill, and that's one of the things that I'm going to be showing in the video I was talking about. But under the Noahide laws, every Christian would be put to death because idolater mm. well, worshiping Jesus Christ is idolatry in rabbinic Judaism. So to be Christian, be an idolater, an idolater in the eyes of rabbinic Judaism and the Noahide law. The second thing is every year I'm, I'm actually going to show this as well. Every year you can go online and you can see when each um, Hebrew holiday, each Jewish holiday starts and ends. And like in 2023, um, Hanukkah I think started on the 7th and ended on the 15th. Um, I might be a day off on when it started, but it ended on the 15th. In 2024, Hanukkah start. It's got a start date, but it doesn't have any. And way more importantly, the Feast of Tabernacles, or Feast of Food, however um, you want to pronounce it. Uh, I think it's called... Uh, can't remember the, the Hebrew name for it. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not a Hebrew person, but um, it has a start date. It, it, it's, it's a very significant um, biblical festival because it represents when Jesus will return for us, and that is actually what it represents. But that's not what it represents for, you know, rabbinic Judaism. For the Kabbalists, it represents when their Messiah will come to power and rule not just Israel, but rule the world from Jerusalem. And mm -hmm. It has, but but every year each holiday has a um, beginning date and an ending date that you can find online. On it's an official, um, you know, Jewish website from Israel. But in 2024, they only have start dates, and that is very significant. Now, if you don't understand why that is significant, then all I can say right now is just think about why something as important as those two Jewish holidays having a beginning but not an ending, why that would be significant for the world. And also watch the video that will be playing. Um, I'm almost finished putting it together, so it, it'll be uploaded and it'll be ready sometime this week. Now, it will be a members only video, um, but I think it's going to be one that I only make members. They have it where it can be members only for a while, just so members can see it early, and then it'll go to public where everyone can see it. I think that's what I'm going to do instead of making it only for members because it's too important. The information just is too important to, to make it to where everybody can't see it. But um, I'm sorry for taking the floor so long I just uh, those are the the things that I see happening both on a prophetic level in 2024 and on a national and worldwide level you know I see these 
small conflict turning into a large conflict. And I also see someone rising to power that puts a stop to these things. And because of him bringing peace to a world on the brink of literally um, bringing about the end of the world that people are going to love him on a scale that we've never seen before because there's going to be you know supernatural power behind it. but mm. you know there are some other things that are coming in 2024 like on January 1st there was already a new variant of CV19 um, you know there there's uh, in Canada and the US there and a bunch of other places in the world including um, countries on the continent of Africa um, I'm not positive whether South Africa is one but I know it's on the continent um, there is a zombie virus that mm -hmm. so far has only affected animals but the scientists are worried and believe that it can uh, be transferred from animals to people and I know here in the United States it's been pretty severe in the deer population so as, as a deer hunter is something that I've actually looked for when hunting and I'm sure brother Matthew Marcel uh, one of our um, fellow members of the Ministry of Kingdom Productions and Publishing and he uh, he hunts more than I do so I'm sure he's aware of it. but yeah. that's what I see for 2024 so far and I'll be showing the evidence for it in the, the video that'll be coming later in the week. Yeah, um, brother, something that I was thinking of um, while you were speaking is um, the, the other day you and I spoke about um, when we had a private conversation, we spoke about um, the people thinking or people being under the impression that um, rabbinic Jews uh, uh, they only read the Old Testament but one thing I forgot to mention to you is that um, obviously they read the the, um, the uh, Zohar and they, they read all kinds of um, the, what's that other one called? The, the Talmud the Talmud yes and um, I mean, if you if you look at what the, the Talmud says uh, uh, about Jesus Christ, it's so blasphemous, you know. I would, oh yes, I even want it, it. It says yeah. that he is burning in hell in excrement, his own excrement, yeah. and that's putting it mildly. You know, uh, that's that's not word for word. Word for word yeah. is too blasphemous. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is that um, what people need to understand is one of my colleagues at, at the school where I teach, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, he is doing a lot of research on the um, Holocaust and a lot of stuff in uh, history of, of the Second World War. And he, yeah. he listened to a lot of um, interviews with uh, survivors from Auschwitz. And, uh, the, the greatest majority of those Jews have basically they don't even read the Old Testament. Yes. You would think that they would, um, you know, they would talk to you about the book of Genesis and whatever book in the Old Testament, Psalms and whatever. Absolutely. But they, they are so basically so brainwashed with the um, by the uh, mis mystic, mystic teachings you know uh, of, of the Talmud and the Zohar and all that stuff and they um, it's it's kind of like 
what you find, what you hear many um, people who come out of the Catholic Church, what you, you hear them say, a lot of them when I speak to them and I ask them, um, do the Catholic Church still use the Doi Reims Bible? Then they tell me, I don't even know what the Doi Reims Bible is. We never read from the Bible in the Catholic Church. And then I asked them, what did yeah. you read? And then they say, we read from the Catechism. Catechism, uh, yep. Yeah. So it's it's the kind of the same agenda, you know. Um, in, well, and there's a reason for that. Um, mm. The the Catholic Church, the the Roman Catholic Church, because Catholic just means worldwide, universal, and yeah. the Church has always used the word Catholic, even before there was you know the heresy of the Pope or. Uh, you know the the role the Roman Catholic heresy that we see today. You know, mm. hundreds of years before that, it was still called Catholic, but it was not the same thing. It was just in its you know its definition, its it, the meaning. It it was only universal or worldwide you know the whole church that's all it meant was the one body of christ it, you know it wasn't talking about uh a sect of christendom and there's a, yeah. a big difference between christendom and christianity mm. uh, yeah. you know christendom has many different groups and sects of, of, of people who call themselves Christian. You know, there are many uh, groups and churches from all over the world that are a part of Christian. And then you have one singular body of Christ that is Christian. Now, there are many denominations that have people in their churches that are a part of the body of Christ. But the denominations themselves are not a part of Christianity. They are man-made organizations, period. Jesus Christ and the apostles founded the church, the kingdom of God. Yeah. Man founded organization, the different things that they named, you know, of uh, there are too many denominations for me to even attempt to try to name or no yeah it's, yeah but. yeah it's it's ridiculous how many de denominations there are it's um i mean if, if you look at what what the apostle paul wrote and also what some of the other apostles wrote in in regards to the f in the early church in the days of the early church it was called the the, f the christians were called the followers the followers of the way and yeah. um if you see you know the unity that they had yes they they had some they had some uh, squabbles here and there and, and um, so on but now you compare that to this interdenominational politics um I mean, I, I was in the Reformed Church for 33 years, and yeah, you know, if you talk to the minister, then it's always they have to bash the one of the other churches, and they have to talk bad about that church, and those churches talk bad about this church and that, and it's all this human-made, you, you know, human-made uh, stuff, and. Um, interdenominational politics it's, it's ridiculous you know yes, um, it is it's, yeah so um, 
once again, it's it's that thing, you know, of people staring themselves blind um, in, you know, something that's organized and it, it seems very, it seems very nice. It seems very um, good and it seems very pious and whatever. But I mean, um, if, if you look at, once again, the, the, the first church, I mean, Peter, initially when Jesus called him, he was a, he was a simple fisherman. Um, a lot of the apostles were, when, when they were called, they were simple people. They were very ordinary people. They, and you look at what the denominations say of when you want to become a minister or whatever. It's the exact opposite. You must study for so many years. And if you dare to differ with the professors um, at the seminary, then you are a heretic and you're this and you're that and whatever. Um, it's, it's the exact opposite of, of what I see, what, what the Bible says and what the early church did, did. And I mean, the way they go on, these denominations, uh, it, it seems as if the Jesus went to Simon Peter and the others and, and asked them, um, I want you to be followers of me, but how many degrees do you have? You know, yeah. he never said that. He, just, he said, follow me, you know. Um, I, I I agree with you completely. And it, it, I don't think anywhere is as bad as the United States of America when it comes to um, churches and denominations requiring um, their ministers to have degrees from seminary. And mm. uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you, there's anything wrong with a pastor having a degree from seminary. I have a degree from seminary. But the thing is, is that is something else that comes from man and not from God. And the things, do you know how many things I that I was taught in seminary that I use in preaching? None of them, literally, none of them. It's the things that I've learned from scripture, you know, studying the Bible and unlearning the things that I was taught in seminary. Because a lot of things that you learn in seminary are false. Now, there are good seminaries and I wish they had an online um, college that people from around the world and other parts of the United States could go to but the only seminary that I would recommend anyone go to is Sattler College um, here in America it's up north I can't think exactly where it is right second but um you know, the, the college itself is, is named after one of the true reformers, one of the Anabaptists, not um, one of the political Reformation leaders like Martin Luther or John Calvin or uh, this one. Winley, I think his name is, um, or was, but, you know, men like Sattler and men like uh, Minnow um, Simmons, uh, people who were pious men of God who were called Anabaptist as a derogatory term the same by by other so-called Christians both Catholics and reformers um, mm. 
the same way that the original Christians who followed and called themselves uh, followers of the way were originally called Christian as a derogatory term. And they eventually just chose to accept it, you know, because Jesus says, rejoice when men persecute you. Um, mm. I, I had a quick verse or two of scripture I wanted to read. Just, just really quick, but before we get ready to close out and give our final uh, thoughts, and I'm going to let you have the floor for the the rest of the time until we end the episode. But Jesus, the thing that we need all Christians need to know and study until it is literally memorized completely by every believer if possible and written upon your heart and that is the teachings of Jesus Christ beginning with the Sermon on the Mount which is Matthew mm-hmm. Five, chapter five through seven. You were talking about, you know, the 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 infighting, and we were both talking about, you know, the way Christians treat other Christians. All you have to do is look on Facebook, look in the the comments of Christian posts on Facebook. And see the way Christians yeah. talk to other Christians. Um, yeah. You know, there, there's anger everywhere, and there, there is anything but the way that Christ tells us to behave and to live in the Sermon on the Mount. You know, mm. we are not to hold a grudge or anything against our brothers and sisters regardless to what they have done to us in Matthew chapter 6 right after Jesus gives the model prayer the Lord's prayer he says in starting in verse 14 that the Lord's prayer ends in verse 13 But right after that, starting in verse 14, Jesus says, For if ye forgive men their sin, your heavenly Father will also forgive you your sin. But if ye forgive men not their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, sins and trespasses is the same thing. Um, it actually said trespasses in both verses. I I said sin. Just trying to make it easier for people to understand. But it, you could use either word there. He, he's, it's the sins, the, the things that we do against both God and man you know when you do wrong towards somebody when you do something you shouldn't either verbally or physically if you forgive people who have done those things to you then God will forgive you the things that you have done to him and we are all guilty of Mm -hmm. sinning against God both before we came to Christ and after we were born you know I commit sin on a daily basis not purposefully and not major sins I don't live a life of sin but 
I find myself having to ask forgiveness for something every day, even if it was just thinking something I should or getting angry with somebody. You know, yesterday I felt somebody had done something that they shouldn't have towards me and I got really mad and I sent them a message and I, even though I was in my flesh, I didn't say anything that, you know, was mean or hateful or anything like that. I, I just, I was angry at the time and I sent a message letting them know that what they did was wrong and I should have said anything at all. The Bible says be angry and sin not. It's normal for a human, even a born again human, to get angry. But mm -hmm. if we are living an Ephesians 6 lifestyle, and Ephesians 6 is simply Paul talking about the lifestyle of Matthew chapter 5 through 7 in different words. Um, the whole armor of God, spiritual warfare, everything that you read in Ephesians 6, that is a lifestyle. You have to live that way. That way of life can be found in Matthew chapter 5 through 7. And if you're living the way Jesus tells us to live in Matthew 5 through 7, then instead of being one of the children of disobedience from the book of Ephesians chapter, uh, several chapters, but uh, chapter 5 especially, uh, but instead of being a child of disobedience, you'll be a child of God. And mm. Mm. if you are living the way Jesus tells us to live in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, Matthew 5 through 7, then you have the whole armor of God. If you're living that way every day, you're waking up every day and taking every thought captive you know pick, picking up your cross and following christ producing fruit telling others about christ mm. if you are doing the things that jesus commanded us to do then you have the whole armor of god that's not something that you need to worry about if you're living that and that is something that if you didn't hear anything else that was said in this video I need you to hear and understand in 2024 and every part of the future that this world has left you need to live every day in a lifestyle with the whole armor of God on. And make you know, a lifestyle with the whole armor of God is to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ from the Sermon on the Mount yeah. and the other teachings of Christ, the red letters. A uh, good time that you can bring that will help you understand and learn how to do this is by a brother in Christ who I hold to high regard and I have seen. His name is Phil Baker. He does a podcast on Omega Frequency called Reclaiming the Faith. He wrote, he's written three books that I have and that I know of, but the book that I'm referring to is called New Wine Skins and the Simple Words of Christ. And that, I, unless he's written one I don't know about, that was his first book. And it's one that will help you understand the importance.
importance of the red letters and how to get back to living according to those simple words of Christ that are simple as far as understanding, but the most important part of scripture there is. And that's all I have today. I'm going to turn it completely back over to you, my brother. Okay, brother. Um, yes, I... I uh, completely agree with what you said and you know the the thing is um, that Jesus said and um, here in Matthew 5 from uh, verses 13 to verses 16 he said that we are the salt of the world and he said that we are the light of the world we should shine the light of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the light he is the word that is the word is the light that cannot be overcome by darkness and you know we we talked about earlier we mentioned christian persecution the per- persecution of christians and um so on so we have to we have to pray every day for the lord to help us um shine the light of jesus in this world and the moment when you counter attack uh, the enemy's lies with um, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And obviously you are shining the light of Christ because the word is Jesus. Jesus is the light. And the thing is that no matter how dark it gets, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful comfort that we have in knowing that no darkness can ever overcome the word of God. No amount of lies no amount of deceit can overcome the word of God and in this day and time we are living in we should pray that um, our thoughts and our uh, words and our deeds should all glorify Christ and that comes back to what you've said about the lifestyle that you live and um, I mean uh, taking the thoughts captive also and all those things and also what we need to remember is that um, Jesus, when he prayed for his disciples in John chapter 17, um, I always think of uh, John chapter 17, verse 17, where he prayed and he said, Father, sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. So no matter how many lies we are bombarded with in this dark world, um, we always have the word of God. And we should stand in that truth and we, sh- we are sanctified in that truth. And um, I, you know, this morning I, when I woke up, I didn't feel very good. Um, I could immediately um, feel that it was a spiritual attack on me. And, and I called out to Jesus for help. And the Amen. Lord basically told me to go and sit and read Psalm 24. And, you know, I've read Psalm 24 so many times, but this morning when I read it, I just, the, those first two verses struck me like a hammer, you know. Um, Stop the note. It says that everything, yeah, uh, the, the whole earth and all, basically all creation. All creation. And the full world. Yeah, it's, it's, it belongs to the Lord. And it, it is, it is his. Um, so, coming back to what I said at the beginning, it doesn't matter what governments do, it doesn't matter what people say and what threats they make and um, threats they make against uh, we, uh, us who follow Jesus Christ and uh, the, the, when they f- carry, f- physically carry through with those threats and start throwing people in camps or kill us or torture us or whatever, the, f- the fact is uh, God the Father is always in control and um, how wonderful to know that in His only begotten Son Jesus Christ we have a life in abundance and we have the Holy Spirit working as a guide and a comforter and a protector in our lives so yeah that's that's what I just what I wanted to um, end the discussion with 
Hallelujah. I agree 100% and we are out of time. But if you happen to have missed the live stream, don't fret. Um, the video will be in the archive, um, but it won't be in the live section. Um, you'll be able to find it in past live streams. It's a playlist called Past Live Streams. And it will be in the video uploads because I'm going to take it down so I can see any malfunctions that there may have been, like our audio not lining up with the video and see if I can fix it and then I'm going to put video back up so it'll be back up in just a little while so if you miss the live stream like I said don't fret it'll be back up now for Kingdom Productions Network I am the Remnant Warrior along with my brother the Remnant Watchman saying to each and every one of you that I love you all and until next time God bless you all grace and peace